also initiated training for magistrates in the northwest on court administration. More than 10 years ago, Advocate Matlanga was one of the JSC commissioners that interviewed the former Chief Justice nominee Mokhweng Mokhweng in Cape Town. Uh, I've been in the fortunate position of having appeared before former Chief Justices Ngobo Langa and Shaskalsin. And uh, when counsel would be presenting argument before them, they would be quite engaging. Um, I could give examples about the Supreme Court of Appeal as well. President Mpati, when he presides, he too is uh, quite engaging. And uh, that is true as well of um, even judges who are just ordinary judges of appeal, for instance, in the Supreme Court of Appeal, <laughs> but who will be the senior judge in a panel and therefore the presiding judge. And uh, my experience there as well is that uh, they are quite engaging. Um, I have appeared, I think, two or so times in the Constitutional Court after your appointment to that court. And uh, on those few occasions, I don't remember you uh, saying anything at all during argument. And now, Matlanga will be under scrutiny for the same top position in the judiciary. He was appointed to become a Justice of the Constitutional Court in 2013. Matlanga delivered various landmark judgments which required Parliament to amend the legislation. In 2016, he delivered a judgment in which he declared Section 11 of the Powers, Privileges and Immunities of Parliament and Provincial Legislatures Act to be inconsistent with the Constitution. The DA had successfully challenged the constitutionality of this provision in the Act. The move was prompted by the removal of EFF MPs by security forces from the National Assembly Chamber during former President Jacob Zuma's 2015 State of the Nation address. I also order the security officers to please assist. But Honorable Speaker, we want to speak. Madam Speaker, we want to speak. Madam Speaker, we want to speak. Madam Speaker, we want to speak. Section 11 of the Act made provision for the arrest or removal of a person who causes disturbance, but it was not clear whether it included members of Parliament. The court declared that MPs cannot be removed or arrested by police for causing disturbance in the chambers due to exercising freedom of speech. In terms of the Act, Causing or participating in a disturbance is a criminal offence for which members are liable to be arrested in terms of Section 11. Surely the threat of arrest for a criminal offence with all that may ensue has the potential of inhibiting free speech in Parliament. Based on this, the majority concludes that if person in Section 11 includes members, it does limit the privilege of parliamentary free speech. This limitation is at odds with the constitutional stipulation that free speech may be subject only to parliament's rules and orders. The question is, does person in section 11 include members? The majority judgment observes that throughout the act, person preponderantly includes members. When interpreted both contextually and purposively, person in the section includes members of parliament. The majority judgment holds that the omission of the words other than a member after the word person in section 11 is inconsistent with the constitution. Matlanga also delivered another landmark judgment on the electoral act which failed to pass constitutional muster. The act was declared unconstitutional for not making provision for independent candidates to contest national and provincial elections. 
Matlanga made the ruling in June 2020 and ordered that the legislation be rectified by June this year. It is declared that the Electoral Act 73 of 1998 is unconstitutional to the extent that it requires that adult citizens may be elected to the National Assembly and provincial legislatures only through their membership of political parties. Five, the declaration of unconstitutionality is prospective with effect from the date of this order, but its operation is suspended for 24 months to afford Parliament an opportunity to remedy the defect giving rise to the unconstitutionality. Madlanga, who will turn 60 years old in March, will be up against three other candidates to compete for the highest position in the Constitutional Court. His 12-year non-renewable term as a Constitutional Court Justice will end in 2025. Mercedes Basend, SABC News, Parliament.